What's up, Fusion? How's it going, friends? Welcome to Fusion in person. Welcome Fusion online. We're so glad that you guys are with us as we continue our dual functioning Fusion. We're really excited about uh, just being able to reach some new people. And, you know, just uh, for you guys, like if, if you ever had like a friend that you wanted to invite, like we can send you the link and you can just be like, hey, you don't even have to show up. You can just kind of watch a little bit of this ridiculousness. And then obviously they would want to come next week because they experienced how awesome it is on YouTube and then come with you next week because um, we're going to start with a ridiculous game and you are going to want to be a part of that and then they can come and they could be a part of it. So for the game this morning, it's not morning. I've been here a really long time. All right. It's been a day, but it's been a great day. Um, all you have to do for this game is know your Disney songs. All right. I heard the gasp. I heard the gasp. I know that there are Disney aficionados. Think back. Do uh, you guys remember back in our like days when we could actually do things and we did Alpha and we had like our Disney music night? It was always one of my favorites. You guys would just belt it out. It'd be great. Well, you need to know your Disney songs in order to play this game. So I want two teams. We can have, you know, you guys can have partners. That's fine. Maybe like two teams of two. Volunteers. Come on. Get the gasp up. Get the gasp up. All right. Dina, pick a friend. All right. There you go. Come on up. And I don't see anybody else. All right, yep, you two, come on up. There we go, all right. So you two are gonna be on this side, you two are gonna be on this side. All right, so this is, this is helpful because what you guys are gonna do, I'm, I'm gonna need some help with math on this. So I'm gonna explain what this is. This game is called Monotuned Disney. Here is your microphone, you guys can grab that. It's already on, so just, you can take it off the clip, you can hold it, that's, that's perfectly fine. One of you, and there's your microphone, you guys can kinda come up. We'll, I'll, yep, that one, that's the one. All right, that is the one. So this is called Monotuned Disney, and here's what's going to happen. Can you guys step into the light, so our friends on the camera? That's okay. It's fine. This is not an intimidating stage in any way, shape, or form. I mean, they let me on it, right? If they let me on it, they'll let you on it. It's, it's, not, it's not scary in any way, shape, or form. Okay, so Monotune Disney. Here's how this is going to work. On the screen, so you guys look at that screen. You guys look at that, that, that screen. Pick it. Just face that way. It's probably easier than looking backwards. Are going to be lyrics of a Disney song. All right? So for each of these slides, you have three potential points that you can get. You get one point if you can name the movie that it came from. You get a second point if you can name the name of the actual song. Okay. All right? And you get a third point if you sing it. All right? I'll sing it. No. You don't have to sing it well. You just have to kind of get the tune. Okay. All right? It's, uh, it's, uh, whatever it is. All right. So. It's gonna be a little kind of like competition. First one to say it out loud is gonna be getting it first. All right, we have seven rounds. Um, like first person, all right, we're gonna go. Are you guys yeah. ready? All right, round one. Once you get it, I'm gonna read them out and you guys kind of like just shout out when you got it. All right, round one, what do we got? It's funny how some- uh, Let it go, frozen. Uh, wow. Funny how some distance. Makes everything seem small. I said two words. And the fears that once controlled me can't get to me at all. Three points. All right. Round two. You guys might be in trouble. All right. Yeah. Happy trigger finger. All right. So round two. It is where we are. It's enough for this wide-eyed wanderer that we've got this far. What is this song? What is silence? We got a lot of silence. Yeah, okay. It's it's harder than it looks. It is harder. Aladdin? It is not Aladdin. It is not Milan. They're calling up for the crowd. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give you the movie. All right, two points still available. Wait, wait, it, Moana? It is from The Lion King. Can you feel the love tonight? Can you feel the love tonight? Is correct. Oh Do you want to sing some of it for an extra point? No, she's like, no, I'm good. All right, cool. <laughs> three to one. All right, moving on. Round three. I, I just guessed it. I was waiting for that, but not that part of the song. That's okay. I, it's hard. Round three. What do we got? Tranquil oh, as a Mulan. forest. It, uh, no, I'll make uh, a man out of you. Is that right? Yes. No, uh, uh, just just cuts me off. Pale, it's very pathetic, rude. Like, I can't even get two words out. She's like, look at blue. <laughs> Mr. I'll make, make a man out of you. 
That was a note. All right. Three. <laughs> six points to one. All right. All right. I think we're just going to alternate. All right. I'm going to give you guys this round. We're going to go back and forth just because right. you're, you're too fast on the trigger. It's unfair. All right. I'm changing the rules because I have all the power. Round four for you guys. Do you know this one? Look at this trove of treasures. The Little Mermaid. Yeah. Little Mermaid. What's the name of the song? Part of Your World. Part of Your World. Part of Your World. That's two points. You can play catch up and sing well. like a whole line. I can sing it. I don't either. Who can? If you can sing it out there, just just shout out. Jay, can I? Somebody? Can I get my points? Sing it. I can sing it. We can sing Treasures untrue. Do 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 do. I'll even let you hum, even if you don't know the words. I don't know that one very well. All right, that's okay. All right, two more points, so it is three to six. All right, for you. Round five. When the road looks rough ahead oh, oh, and your miles. Story. You've got a friend in me. When the road looks rough ahead and you're miles and miles from your What's home the name of the song? Bed. I said, I said you've got See, a See, you talk so fast. I missed I it. All right, nine to three. Next round. All right, I'm going to give you guys just all the points because I can. If, <laughs> what? It's, listen, this is a church. All right? All right, there we go. All right, thank you. All right, round six. What do we got? Don't pick the prickly pear by the paw. Oh, bare when, necessities. From the line, uh, from Jungle Book. From Jungle Book. Um, bare necessities. Can just give me a little line. I hate singing in front of people. You got okay. it, Rachel. Dina, do you, you can, do can you hum a little bit? If I did, I would I sing with you, but I don't know it. Bare necessities. That's a point. Six. All right. I'm giving you six. It's tied, just because I can. All right. All right. There we go. Tie game going six, to the last round. Okay. All, right. All right, Jay. <laughs> All right. This is going to be a buzzer. Shout it out. Be nice. Round seven. Last one. What do we got? With dessert, she'll oh, want tea. Um, and my dear, that's fine with me. Well, Beauty the and the Beast. Beast. Uh, be our guest. Be our guest. Be our guest. Be our guest. Come, Come from behind guest. victory right there. <laughs> All right, round of applause. Guys, do you want your prizes this week? What? You get a fist bump from oh, Jay. Yes. All right, there you go. Well done. All right, round of applause for our guests. <laughs> Hesse, be our guest. All right, you guys have heard enough of me talking. Announcements, Donovan, come up. I've got one quick one. If you signed up for tech help, remember, we're going to stay after for 10 minutes after small group. Just meet me back by that camera, all right? Uh, you're going to see me and Austin back there, and we're just going to have a quick tech orientation right after small groups. Meet us there. It'll be about 10 minutes. Donovan has more other things. Where, there he is. All right. All right. What's up, Fusion? Yeah, it was a little good. What's up, Fusion? There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. A couple of announcements. Um, before I get to announcements about Fusion, I have one big announcement. It's Austin's birthday. <laughs> Shout out to Austin. It's his birthday, so if you see him, just say happy birthday to Austin. He does so many things. Um, if you follow us on Instagram, he is, like, behind everything you guys see, all of the graphics and everything, so he does a great job at what he does, okay? Um, as Jay talked about having Fusion online, um, please invite um, your friends. It's a great way. Uh, to get them plugged in, um, get them checking out um, what it is that we're about without coming into the building. So it's a great way to do that. Also, if you have not subscribed to the Fusion channel, to YouTube channel, please do so, all right? We're trying to get to 100 subscribers, and if we get to 100 subscribers, then maybe I'll do something with my hair, Jay. Anyway, um, plug Bible study. Bible study is going to be Tuesday nights from 6.30 to 8 p.m. in the garage, all right? We are studying the Sermon on the Mount. There's so much stuff that's happening in the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus is talking about, and we're just taking a deeper look into that. So if you are interested in that, uh, please register if you're coming in person, or if you can't make it in person, but you can watch online, we also have that option as well, and it, you'll get the text for the link in, the Fusion, um, in your Fusion text. Okay? All right. Um, Jay already said that? Yep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray for Garrett. So Garrett is going to come up and speak to us. Um, if you don't know who Garrett is, I think everybody does. But Garrett is the next-gen director, um, next-gen pastor here at Living Word Community Church. So for those online, this may be a new face for you guys. But Garrett is an amazing guy. Um, he's super funny, super personable, um, and he definitely loves the Lord. All right? So let's pray for Garrett, and then we're going to pray for our time together. All right? Let's pray. 
Father, thank you, um, first and foremost, for who you are. Thank you for um, the, your glory, which is on display everywhere we look. Um, Father, we pray uh, first for Garrett. We pray, God, that you would speak to him and speak through him. May you give him strength um, and authority to speak your word to us, Lord. And I also pray, God, for us that we would open up our hearts and minds to receive what you have for us today, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much that we have the opportunity to glorify you and to praise you. And I um, ask, Lord, through faith, God, that we would leave here with a deeper appreciation for who it is that you are and what it is that you've done for us. We love you and we commit this time to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey Fusion, this is the third week in our journey through Matthew. So far, we've seen in chapters one through eight that Jesus was the Messiah, the one that was prophesied hundreds of years before his birth. In these chapters, Matthew details the beginning of Jesus' ministry, his preaching, teaching, discipling, and healing. This week, we're looking at chapters nine through 12. In chapter nine, Jesus continues his ministry and demonstrates the power of God's kingdom. He forgives people of their sins, he heals the paralyzed, the blind, the sick, and he raises the dead to life again, all the while confronting the religious leaders who criticized him. In chapter 10, Jesus calls together his disciples and gives them authority to cast out evil and heal the sick. He then sends them out with careful instructions and warnings, but most importantly, he sends them out with the power of the Holy Spirit to share the message of the kingdom of God. In chapters 11 and 12, we see that there was a mixed response to Jesus' ministry and his teachings of this upside down or countercultural kingdom of God. Jesus isn't at all what people expected of the Messiah. Many had expected Jesus to come as a triumphant king who would judge and rule, but instead he came as a friend of sinners, seeking out those that were lost, hurting, and sick. And he calls his followers to do the same. Hey, what's up, Fusion? I feel like there, there might be like a dragon backstage because it is so like misty foggy up here. And when I walked outside, I saw the moon and it looked like the eye of a dragon. And now I'm like in all this haze, like Smaug, the dragon is nearby. So anyway, can you guys do me like just do something crazy, like a crazy favor? I know you can see my smiling face. Can everybody just like pull it down real quick and give me a smile? Yeah, all right, love it. All right, thanks for humoring me there. Um, and then you can put them back up. But I just wanted to see your smiling faces. I missed you guys. I haven't been out to Fusion in a while. So thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you so much for your dedication to desire to be in the Word of God. Uh, one of my favorite artists says, you know, get in the Word of God and get the Word of God in you. And one of the ways that we do that is by showing up in community at church. And so I wanna say thank you guys for your investment in God's Word as God's uh, living spirit is in you, interacting with the word, transforming you more and more into his image. And so, hello to everyone online as well. Thank you for making time to be here. And tonight I wanna talk about Jesus, all right? I wanted to talk about Jesus as the God who sees and the God who sends, all right? I know you guys have been spending time in the book of Matthew, and I'm gonna be just kind of doing a flyover of Matthew chapter nine through 12. And we're gonna see that Jesus is a God who is not far away. Jesus is a God who is involved in your life, who sees every part of your life. He is a God that's near. And God has made each of you a special promise. And it's a promise that's repeated in the Old Testament as well as the new promise, uh, as wrong as the promise in the New Testament. And that is that God is with you. God will never leave you or forsake you. All right, one of the places we're gonna see this is in the book of Matthew in chapter 28, 20 where Jesus says, surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus has sent his spirit to live in, in you, within you. Jesus is closer than your skin. He dwells within you. His very spirit lives in you and is alive and active in your life. And one of the many references in the Old Testament to God being with you is found in Isaiah chapter 41, where the Lord says, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God, and I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. If you can just allow your heart to imagine the right hand of God holding you up right now, that he is with you. 
And so with that in mind, let's collectively bow our hearts in prayer and seek the Lord in his word with this beautiful truth, this beautiful promise that he's with us. Jesus, we thank you so much for being the God who is with us, Emmanuel. Thank you for everyone here tonight as we collectively gather uh, in your church, in your house. Um, We know that you're here with us. You were always with us, but in a special way, your manifest presence is felt. We thank you for the opportunity we have to gather, to pour over your word, and to worship together. We thank you for this time. Pray that you would use it to deepen our walk with you, bring us closer to you, and transform us more and more into your image. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Jesus is the God who sees, and he's the God who sends. What does Jesus see? The first thing that we're gonna look at is Jesus sees faith. What does Jesus pay attention to? What does Jesus see? What does he look for? He looks for faith, acts of faith. Matthew 9, 2 says, when Jesus saw their faith. And Matthew 9, 22, it says, Jesus turned and saw her and said, your faith has healed you. You see, Jesus sees faith often in the context of needs. Jesus sees faith often in the context of brokenness. Let's read Matthew 9, 1 and 2. If you have your Bibles with you, I'm going to be Matthew chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, or your digital Bible, your your phone Bible. All right, Jesus stepped into a boat, crossed over and came to his own town. Verse 2, some men brought to him a paralyzed man lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Jesus saw the faith of the paralyzed man and his friends who brought him. Jesus saw faith. You see, faith is shown by your actions. What does Jesus see when he looks at you? Does he see your faith? Are you living in such a way that your faith is actually able to be shown? All right? Real faith causes people to act, and sometimes... It looks like inviting your friends into the broken areas of your life to collectively have faith together, just like this paralyzed man and his friends. You see, when you get together with your friends to pray over a certain area of your life or the world that is broken, and then you decide to take action together, Jesus sees that. It's like a magnet for his eyes, all right? That's faith that captures God's attention. And that's how revivals have broken out in the past, all right? Matthew 9, 20 and 22. Jesus, or sorry, Jesus was walking and just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, if only I could touch his cloak, I will be healed. Jesus turned and saw her and and he said, take heart, daughter, Your faith has healed you. See, Jesus sees your faith in action. I don't think there's anything that was ever written about a robe having healing powers. But this person believed in Jesus so much, believed in the power of Jesus so much that her faith caused her to believe, if I just touch a piece of his clothes, I can be healed. And it wasn't the robe that healed her. Jesus said, take heart, daughter, your faith in me has healed you. And so let me ask you this question. When it comes to your faith, what is Jesus seeing right now? When it comes to your faith in Jesus, what does he see in your life? How are you showing your faith to Jesus? Is it noticeable? A second thing that Jesus sees is potential. Matthew 9, 9 through 12. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew. He was sitting at a tax collector's booth. And Jesus said, follow me. And Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they were paying attention to this, they asked the disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. 
But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Jesus is not focusing on failures and limitations, but he's focused on your potential, who you could become when you follow him. Romans 8, transformed more and more into his image. Jesus is paying attention to your potential on what you could accomplish when his spirit is active in your life. When Peter messed up and disowned Jesus, he eventually repented and Jesus called him to feed my sheep, to become a pastor. And he sent Peter out with the other disciples to start building the church and to make other disciples. Jesus came to call sinners, but he doesn't want you to keep living with that label of sinner. He wants to transform you from sinner to follower. And not just follower of Jesus, but evangelist, pastor, prophet, a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a city on a hill, light of the world, right? Salt of the earth, and on and on. Jesus has these beautiful descriptions of who you could become, your potential as you follow him and as you live according to his way. Jesus sees you, who you can become and what you can accomplish when you accept his invitation to come, follow me. If you're here tonight and you not consider yourself someone who is following Jesus, his way, his teachings, his path, I wanna invite you to start following him. And that takes faith. It takes faith that Jesus would pay attention to. Matthew had to do the hard thing and leave behind a job that paid very well as a tax collector and decide to follow Jesus. Jesus saw his potential and said, Matthew, come and follow me. And then Matthew placed his faith in Jesus and began to follow him and live out his teachings. And so will you cross that line of faith? Will you leave behind whatever's keeping you stuck and follow Jesus? Take that next step that he's putting in front of you to follow him. The last thing we'll notice that Jesus sees is this. Jesus sees the haters and he sees the hurting. Matthew 9, 18 and 19. While he was saying this, a synagogue leader came and knelt before him and said, my daughter has just died. But come and put your hand on her and she will live. And so Jesus got up and went with him and so did his disciples. Drop down to verse 23. When Jesus entered the synagogue leader's house and saw the noisy crowd and people playing pipes like a funeral song, he said, go away. The girl is not dead. She's only sleeping. But they laughed at him. They laughed at him. And after the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took the girl by the hand and she got up and news of this spread throughout the whole region. Now it took faith for a synagogue leader to go to Jesus, to ask him something because the Pharisees were talking about Jesus. The Pharisees had nothing good to say about Jesus. They would, they would try to get him in a trap, all right? Trap him in his words. And this synagogue leader would have been friends with those religious leaders, or at least it would have been co-workers, all right? So it took faith for him to go to Jesus and ask to heal his daughter. There's something about the heart of a loving parent that would do anything for their kids, even if it meant public shame, like this leader would have experienced. A loving parent can be a desperate parent. And they'll do crazy stuff if it means life or death for their child. And the more a parent loves their child, the more it hurts to see their child hurting. And Jesus sees the hurting. And Jesus sees the faith of the parent who's hurting for their hurt child. So Jesus goes to the house and he heals the child. And you know what? No matter what amazing things Jesus can do, no matter what amazing things Jesus is gonna do through you in the world, you are gonna confront and be in, in contention with haters. People who have nothing more to do with their time than to laugh at you, to mock you, 
to throw their disbelief in your, in your face and say you shouldn't even try. Just give up. Now in verse 24, it says that they laughed at him. And that's one way to throw hate at somebody. But another way is this. Drop down to verse 34. But the Pharisees said, it is by the prince of demons that he drives out demons. And so one way is for people to question your motives, to question your integrity, to question the source of why you're doing what you're doing and with what power you're doing it. Jesus sees the hurt you're going through, the hurt around you, and he sees the haters that you're gonna be coming up against. One last place where we see that Jesus sees the hurting is Matthew, Matthew 9, 36. It says, when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd, helpless and harassed. They were hurting. And because Jesus is a God who sees and cares about those who are hurting, he is the God who sends. Because Jesus sees the hurting, he sends. And he often sends you to go to the hurting. In Matthew chapter 10, we have a list of the 12 disciples that he's sending out. And then in verse seven, we read this. As you go, proclaim the message, the kingdom of heaven has come near. All right? So Jesus is sending you with a message. Jesus is sending you with a message about the kingdom of heaven. Jesus sending, is sending you with a message of forgiveness and mercy and grace for people who are lost, they can be found. Listen to how Jesus describes one of his original messengers in Matthew eleven ten. 10. This is the one about whom it is written. He's describing John the Baptist. I will send my messenger ahead and he will prepare a way. And so a lot of you are gonna become sort of like a John the Baptist, where you are gonna be preparing the way for people to be introduced to Jesus. It's not very often that people just randomly think to themselves, oh, I'm just gonna go pick up a Bible and try to figure out who this Jesus guy is. No, Jesus sends messengers. He's sending you to go and to speak as one, as, as a citizen of heaven, someone who values the things of the kingdom of God, someone who knows about the value of forgiveness, the value of a peace that passes understanding. And he's using you to prepare the way so that other people can be introduced to Jesus, much like John the Baptist. Jesus is sending you to the hurting. At the end of chapter 11 and verse 28, we have this important message that you're carrying as well. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. That's a good message. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We live in a world that runs people ragged, right? People who don't know how to rest their own physical bodies well, but then people who don't know how to rest their souls, how to find rest for their souls. That's, that's quite a, a line there, that's quite a promise. Jesus is providing rest for their soul, for their inner being, all right? We live in a world that's anxious and frustrating and, and overwhelmed and angry, all right? As one of God's messengers, you have the power to extend this beautiful invitation to find rest in a relationship with Jesus. So the next question is how? How is Jesus sending you? How is Jesus sending you? Matthew chapter 10, 16 and 17. I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd or cunning as snakes and as innocent or harmless as doves. Be on your guard. What does that mean? I'm sending you out like sheep. Bang, bang. All right, what does it mean? We're being sent out like sheep. It means that we're obedient. We're being sent out like sheep because sheep listen to their good shepherd. So we're being sent out in obedience like sheep, but we are to become like, like snakes. 
We're supposed to become wise and cunning and crafty. But at the same time, harmless as doves, innocent, wise and sneaky like a little snake, little sneaky little snake, all right, hiss, hiss, but as harmless as doves, gentle. See, Jesus does not want you to be beating people up with your words. Jesus does not want you to be beating people up with the message of the kingdom of heaven. He is sending you out in obedience like sheep to become crafty and wise in the ways that you enter conversations, but harmless and innocent as doves with the message of the kingdom. And then finally, Jesus is sending you out as a family. You were not sent out alone. Check this out in Matthew chapter 12, 46 through 50. While Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and brothers stood outside wanting to speak to him. And someone told Jesus, your mother and brothers are standing outside and they want to speak to you. And Jesus said, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples. If you were there, he'd be pointing to all of you. And he, would, and he said this, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Jesus is sending you out as a family. You are not alone. Jesus sees you. He sees your faith. He sees your potential. He sees the haters around you, the hurt that you're going through and the hurt around you. And he is sending you, he is sending you with the life-giving message of his kingdom, the good news of forgiveness and grace. He's sending you into some dangerous places where you have to grow in wisdom and how you move, but also with great gentleness. And he's sending you out as a family, you're not alone. And because Jesus is the God who sees and the God who sends, I believe that when you act on your faith and you deliver these messages that God is sending you with, you will see king, the kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And I wanna end with these words, Matthew chapter 9, 33. It says, after Jesus had drove the demon out of the man who couldn't talk, then he could talk again. The crowd was amazed and said, nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. And I pray that our generation can act on our faith and be seen by God and, and be sent in such a way that we see this. Nothing like this has ever been seen in York, in suburban high school, in Red Lion High School, in Central High School, wherever you're at, that people will see Christ in you in such a way that they will know your faith, that they would know the message and that you are not just a normal teenager, but that you are one who is sent by God as a citizen of heaven. Jesus, thank you so much for the truth of your word. I thank you for being the God who sees uh, our faith, the one who sees our potential. You, you see our hurts and you see the hate that we, that we live through, but God, you have sent us. And so I pray that we'd be, we'd be carrying these messages of grace and mercy to a, a world that's broken, a world that's lost and hurting, a world that's angry, and that we can come with these messages of your hope and your goodness, and your grace. And we pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. Good.
down You're never gonna let You're never gonna let me down You're never gonna let You're never gonna let me down You're never gonna let You're never gonna let me down You're never gonna let You're never gonna